As we move on to item 11, uh, the update from the climate change working group has already been mentioned uh, a few times this evening. Uh, Tim Broad, please. Thank you, Chair. Well, although the report's written in my name and in accordance with the Council Convention, um, what I'm actually going to do is hand over to Councillor Chapman, who's Chair of the Climate Change Working Group. All the report seeks to do is to introduce the work that's been done over the last couple of meetings of the group, uh, and particularly to highlight the roadmap that the group has developed. Um, so, Councillor Chapman, over to you. Thank you, Tim. Um, yeah, first of all, I'd just like to say how, how impressive and how um, enjoyable it's been working with the with the uh, people on this group. It's a, it's a cross party. It's a, a wide ranging knowledge, wide ranging enthusiasms, uh, and in the case of our Green Party member, a, an entertaining slight hint of surrealism. <laughs> so, but yeah, can I, I? I will I will start by I, I will go straight in with the roadmap. Um, I mean. It, it is fairly self-explanatory, but I would like to. <coughs> obviously, the first the first column is is our ambition, and that's a zero carbon by 2030. Um, but I would like to use Councillor Ratcliffe's question uh, as a means of, of maybe a, a guidance through this um, through this roadmap. Uh, and let me stress, this is a movable feast. We are we are very open to any in, in suggestions, help requests, concerns by members and by the general public to, to add to this or to, to challenge this. And to that end, um, we will be uh, forming a dedicated email address for anyone to, to put those questions to <coughs> although, or any comments. Uh, and I think, Sandra, that will be probably in force maybe next week. And, and we'll probably put that up on the website for people to to, to, to use. So I would ask you to use that when it becomes available so that we can disseminate um, what, what's relevant, what's appropriate and, and how we go about things. But, but with regards to Mark Ratcliffe's um, comments, uh, um, first of all, where he says the DDC would initially where feasible seek to remove single-use plastic from its premises. Well, if you look at, if you look at the roadmap and you go to um, column A, number two, uh, you'll see that that's labelled promoting a sustainable environment. That links on the top link to DDDC buildings. Well, that is exactly one of the things, Mike, that we will be looking at as relevant to DCC. Yeah. There isn't room on this on this map to put everything that we will be doing, but rest assured that it falls within that category in that roadmap. The second point, um, DDC would encourage plastic, plastic free initiatives. Again, if, if we look down, um, column B and we look leading the way on climate change we've got case studies of good practice yeah. and the third question would look closely at procurement strategy you'll find that we've got procurement in that box and procurement won't just end at plastics or consumables it will look at uh, equipment where it's come from the carbon footprint of, of the country that supplied it and, and it's it, it will be um, it will be covered by those by those topics. So we, we've got a we've got a broad ranging um, remit here, but but I hope you'll agree that that we've covered the main topics because our priority will be to look at the carbon footprint of this council. And uh, but that is not to say that we will not be looking at the wider district and advising using advocacy. To, to, to promote and to, and to help reach that target. I'm going to go a bit off track here. <coughs> um, the, the, one of the most enlightening things I heard this week was, was, this, was this statement by Antonio Guterres, the United Nations Secretary General. On the eve of the climate change conference, he said, I've asked, I've asked leaders to come here and not give fancy speeches. Well, I think that didn't happen. I, I, I think I think we can look at the climate change conference in New York as not so much a glass half full, but as a glass maybe three quarters empty. This is not enough. This is a small part of what has to be done. But I will, in the course of the development of this group and, and, the, and the strategy and the roadmap, I would like to add in column A, a fourth box, 
which says lobbying apathetic governments because without that change yeah I, this is not to denigrate anything that anybody does i mean we've, we've had the the the, the, the um, comments about the illuminations and the change of rules that's great that has to be done everything everything plays a part but if we didn't have china making building two coal plants a week then we wouldn't have to be so concerned and we wouldn't have to have this kind of emergency so we have to use this as a stepping stone as a bottom-up way of making our government and world governments realize that they have got to put into this <coughs> way, way more than they are doing at the moment. Sorry if this is a soapbox, but it's something I feel strongly about. And I feel that we should show the lead that they ought to take up and expand on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank Councillor you. Chairman, are you moving the recommendation? <laughs> Councillor Bryan. I'll second it, uh, if I may say something, Chair, as yeah, well. Um, I sit on the, the, the panel as well, and I also have to share um, Councillor Chapman's uh, thoughts on the other members, it's, it's really nice to sit in the chamber and not have any political agendas there. Um, it's really refreshing and I thoroughly enjoy working on it. What I would say is that um, councillors, uh, other things that we're doing, if I may build on Councillor Chapman, is we are um, we're reaching out, the officers are doing a great job reaching out to experts all over the country, other councils who have done things that we, we could look at as gold standard, uh, so we're not having to reinvent everything. So we are doing that. And another thing that this report does, does uh, allude to is the fact that we are, we are trying to educate and empower people of Derbyshire That's one of the things we're going to try and do through the council, to make changes themselves. You know, you can hit people with a stick or you can give them a carrot. If we're given the carrot, they'll be more likely to keep doing the things that help, you know, help us with the, the climate emergency. So those are the things we're looking to do. So uh, I'll second this report. Okay, now I've got a number of speakers, and in fact, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll ask you to be, um, you know, pertinent with your with your comments, please, and concise. Uh, Councillor Martin Burford, first, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm glad to see this uh, item hasn't been withdrawn. It disappointed about the previous uh, motion, which the Liberal Democrat group has spent a lot of time discussing, and I hope we haven't wasted our time. Now, I can ask, uh, first of all, I want to speak on the debate, but uh, three, or three or four questions. First of all, what are the objective dates in this roadmap? Not any interim dates up to 2030. There must be some interims that have been proposed, I guess. Uh, secondly, um, will information be provided to members um, on the on the meetings, I think probably two or three have been held so far, because those of us not on the working party don't know anything that's happening, to be honest, until this uh, brief report was uh, surfaced, was proposed tonight. Um, secondly, uh, will every council report in the future be assessed uh, against climate change impacts. Uh, every report so you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, every report is, um, is judged on various other criteria, so will they in, in future be assessed vis-a-vis -vis climate change impacts? And the, third, the next question is, are officers, oh no, that's one's been answered about best practice elsewhere, sorry, that's, that's okay, so, so three questions. All right, thank you very much. We'll, we'll take uh, a lot of the speakers first, please. Councillor Pauly. Uh, I've got three, but they're very short questions. Uh, first of all, on the on the actual plan that we've got here, uh, number three, development, uh, <coughs> just doesn't seem to have any arrows going forward. So I wonder why that was. Is it something to do with the fact that those ones below it should be attached to it, or have got themselves attached to the first box by mistake? Uh, the second one is, um, we know that Dave Turby has been very prompt in trying to do things with the illuminations. Um, are other officers doing similar things? Um, and the third one is, um, I've been told that you have not got many resources to support this group. In fact, you haven't got anybody who takes minutes. And I think it would be good if we had somebody who took minutes to um, uh, pass those on to yeah. other members. So can you confirm that you haven't got anybody who's taking minutes for you? And if you please, could, you, could it be arranged? Could we give them that much resource, please? Uh, Shall Tim to answer some of those questions, or David? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> thanks, Councillor Pauly. Um, really, and, and to answer Martin's question as well, the, the remit of this group was to bring a, a, a report to Council within six months. Yeah. Now, the, <coughs> we've had two meetings, and, and really, there wouldn't have been a lot to report because we were we were 
aiming to achieve this. This is the starting point. This is where it all, it all begins to, to, to work out, to work into place. So uh, to answer <coughs> your question, Joyce, we we are having someone, I think Tim will confirm, to, to be a minute secretary from from now on, basically. Mm -hmm. I can't remember anything. Uh, the last one was, um, <coughs> sorry, the first one rather, was um, <coughs> why are there no lines coming out of development and opportunities? Because we haven't really looked at those in close detail yet. We, we, we feel that the opportunities will arise from what we're looking at trying to achieve and, and the opportunities we can, I mean, through things like grant, if we can, if we can get grant funding and stuff like that, but we, we haven't got to that stage. So it is a, it'll, it'll have some lines on hopefully, but there aren't any at the moment. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Tim, do you want to, to, to just add a bit to that, if I may. Um, uh, for information members, uh, there is now a Derbyshire wide officers group looking at climate change issues, which is chaired by um, the Climate Change and Sustainability Officer of the County Council. That's met once. Um, in common with many other authorities, most other authorities in Derbyshire, we don't have a climate change and sustainability officer here at Derbyshire Dale, so there isn't a single officer who provides a level of resourcing to the group in that way. Uh, what the group has at the moment is, is some of my time and, and knowledge, I suppose, of how the council works. In terms of administrative support to the, uh, to the group, something Sandra and I have spoken about previously, which we're looking to, to provide, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Ratcliffe, next, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Can I say thank you to uh, uh, Councillor Chapman for starting us off on this uh, journey. Um, I just want to refer him, if I may, to the fourth part of the question I asked about single-use uh, plastics and just ask uh, Councillor Chapman if he'd care at some point, not uh, for tomorrow, but of course, but uh, at some point to liaise with Jim, Jim Fern uh, to think about uh, issuing publicity and feedback to the general public. I think a bit of publicity and profiling for us on this issue uh, would do us no harm whatsoever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah thanks Mike. Um, we most certainly will be publicising it when we've got something that's really worth publicising. Yeah. And, and obviously um, I'd just like to add that the comment you made about plastics not being strictly climate change, but uh, if you look at the second at B column down at the bottom, this was one of the, the last box in the, in the line, and this was one that I personally wanted to, um, to have in there, even though it's not, it is partly climate change, but it covers what you're saying. And we've got biodiversity and ecosystem services, and, and obviously, in the case of plastic, that's where um, marine life is severely affected. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't have any marine life, but of course, it's the use of single plastics that mm. eventually gets into the oceans. So that is really something that is, you know, it's it's sort of a an add-on, if you like. Uh, it's not strictly CO2 equivalents, but it it's to, it's affecting yeah. the ecosystem, which we, which I didn't want to exclude. Thank you, Councillor Sue Burford. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to just ask about electric charging points. Um, I was asked by a constituent uh, a week or so ago um, about whether they were going to be residents because they were thinking of buying a, an electric car. So that set off a train of thought, and I have to admit, I haven't read the Governance and Resources Committee agenda, so Tim kindly reminded me that it was there, and then I've had a very full report from Keith Possilthwaite. But my question, really, is I see under tourism engagement we've got electric vehicle charging points. Now, I hope that the committee will consider what we are able to do for our residents. And I hope that's something that you will take up. I, I was a little surprised to see it under tourism engagement because we've got residents who want to yeah, okay. do the right thing. Yeah, yeah it, it, it also comes under the, the box above as well, so that he recharging points to the town hall. Oh. Um, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, but we... Car park as well. I mean, we are looking, obviously, at EV charging will be a, a, a large part of our remit, 
but I think we, we, we have to realise how far we can go with, with the residents part because that, that and, and, and really I suppose you'd, you'd look at that further down where we've got it embedding in core strategy so we'll be looking to, to make that point. If I may, it was, uh, if I may Chair, it was to do with um, having, you know, putting um, these charging points in, in, in some of our car parks so that residents mm -hmm. can use them if they haven't got any way of doing it up anywhere else. Well, I think we can we can act as advocates on that, but, but for the actual logistics of it, we'd have to pass that over to, to whoever's got the resources. We can make that point and and and, and sort of strongly make that point, but but we are in the hands of the people who are actually bringing about that. Thank you, Councillor Purdy. Uh, thank you, Chair. For the benefit of Councillor Barefoot, Sue Barefoot, um, on this issue of EBAs, please. Uh, I've had a meeting yesterday with Keith Bosselthwaite on this very issue uh, and it's really a case of supply and demand, uh, not us putting EVAs out into car parks and then nobody using them. I'm um, led to understand, for example, that the council in the Lincolnshire area has gone ahead and put them in all their car parks and they're not being used. So I think we need to wait for the relationship we've got with Dodger County Council for the second phase. Uh, where this proposal for, you know, set more considerations, I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Slack. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, David and the group for making a great start. And uh, um, I've, my views are, are really views, they're not criticisms, really. The three questions, really. Trans the first one's about transport. I, wel I welcome the proposed uh, V charger on the V EV charger points on the town hall, my town hall, but, but would it did, I would have liked to seen the first EV charging points installed at Harrison Way, that, which is the main depot for our transport transport fleet. The, if the EVs were put in at tran, the transport depots, it would be ready for renewable of the vehicles, which when they come to the end of the life, the diesel and petrol vehicles, <coughs> they were ready for uh, electric vans and electric lorries. So, uh, points put in Ariston, Ariston Way are very, very important, I think. And uh, I hope that's in the pipeline. Uh, asking yourself and Tim if that's in the pipeline. Uh, my other two questions, the one's on building. I also I'll note that the DDC building will be assessed for better installation to save heat, but but also will there be an assessment of introducing solar panels on the DDC buildings to make electricity for running the offices, the workshops, and a great advantage of this at the weekends and at and lighter nights that it could be stored in the new batteries and now being developed long term long life batteries are now being developed to store electricity or if they are not available uh, fed into the grid to uh, make more revenue so that's the second question and also on uh, development of uh, buildings also could the group look at small wind turbines being introduced into the DDC buildings which are away from towns and urban areas so the smaller wind turbines as uh, they will generate night and day and uh, weekends and again put, could put into the new batteries being produced or into the national grid for making revenue. So could these points all be looked at please? Uh, Tim, would you like to take that? Yeah, thank you Chair. Yeah. Um, Councillor Slack, if you look at paragraph 2.2 .2 in the report, it talks about there's four bullet points there which uh, the groups identified as priority areas to look at sooner rather than later. Their transport estates, planning policy, and housing policy. Yeah. Um, your first question was about the council's fleet, uh, and that will come under the transport heading. Uh, yeah, and we, we do have a vehicle replacement program, as some members might be aware from when we talk about the capital program. Uh, and uh, Ash Watts, the head of uh, community development and environmental services, is, is looking at electrical electric sure. vehicles sure. as part of that work. Uh, not guaranteeing what he's going to come up with, but he is looking into it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so that, that's in hand. That's good. Uh, as far as solar panels go, there are uh, photovoltaic panels on this building. Yeah. We, we, we put those in some years ago when the roof was renewed. Um, and, it, and the second part, of the second bullet point on here, talks about our estate, um, which is, a, is a, a different way of saying, I suppose, looking at our carbon footprint. Uh, part of that will be looking at the potential for renewable energy on others of our building as well as here. 
Um, and your final point, I think, was about small wind turbines, which comes under the same heading. We haven't looked at that in as much detail as uh, solar generation previously. That's not to say we can't look at it. Don't know what the findings will be. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. We've got Councillor Raw next. Yeah, it was. You might, please. Thank you. It was just to David, really, generally. Um, we were talking about Europe before and, and Brexit, and um, the European Union does do a lot to protect our environment. Do you think it's going to have a particular impact on, on the work we do on this, this project? Are you, look, are you looking at that from a point of view of funding, Claire? Yes, and legislation, because when we come out, the, the legislation that we're under at the minute, under the EU, we'll have to wait until new legislation is developed in the UK. Um, I don't know in detail, it's just it's just a concern that I just worry that it's going to be one of the impacts of, of coming out of the U EU, is it's going to have a negative effect on uh, people supporting uh, the environment and there's going to be less protection in terms of legislation, etc. Can I, can I answer that by giving you an example that I'm involved with? Um, there's, a, there's a partnership which um, I, I chair called Morse for the Future Partnership. Um, and that's been funded by, uh, over the last seven or eight years by, by something called the, the Life Fund, which is an EC funding. And, and we've got through uh, funding Matt will tell me it's about 32 million euros, Matt, altogether. Yeah, and, and, and currently we are being told that we can still apply for life funding from the European Commission. So it could change overnight, but at the moment we are still looking, we're still uh, bidding for funding from European, that yeah. European agency. Yeah. So aside from that, Claire, I, I wouldn't, I, I can't look that far no, in the future, no, but at the moment, the, the 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 Brexit doesn't seem to be affecting it. Fingers crossed. Thank you very much. And finally, Councillor Cruz. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Chapman was really uh, building on Councillor Burford's uh, earlier point. So in, ne in November, there'll be a, re a report coming to Council. I'm just wondering what the shape of that will be. Will it have a budget? Will it have an actual plan? So what, what will it look like in November? Um, I would seriously think it wouldn't have any budget um, in there. Um, we'll, we will have, we'll, we'll have nailed down, um, we will have put flesh on the bones of, of column C, basically. We will have looked at how this applies to, um, I, I can't say we'll cover every topic because there's a lot there we may have to answer more if, if we get, um, if we get input from, from outside, from residents or, or whatever, but, but Certainly, there will be um, <coughs> a large number of, of those topics will have been investigated because there is a, an awful lot of work there, as I'm sure you appreciate. But we will, I, th I hate the phrase, um, but we're probably looking at the low hanging fruit to start with. So, Councillor Martin Burford, have you had your questions answered? Or was there one? Yes, um, I was ready to make a statement. Perhaps. Okay, very quickly, please, because I want to move on. Because this will be your second bite here. Yeah. Well, the questions was first. Yeah. This is the first part of this. Uh, um, uh, obviously, lim local authorities have limited capacity to influence the government in terms of climate change nationally, but uh, and obviously, uh, EU withdrawal will make that worse in terms of cross boundary uh, impacts as well. Uh, but in order to achieve the enormous transformation required um, locally, uh, we're going to have to do something. If we're going to, we've got this carbon neutral aim by 2030. Uh, I wonder exactly what that does mean, where the boundaries are, because obviously the district council only has limited responsibility. Uh, but um, in terms of a list of achievements that I think we need to go for, obviously, as has been mentioned, staff cars and council vehicles must be all electric by then, as yeah. what with charging points absolutely everywhere throughout the district. Uh, all development to be sustainable with solar panels and highest possible energy efficiency in new building. Yeah new housing, mm -hmm. uh, new fossil fuel power use in district council buildings, um, a biodiversity action plan I think is required and along with that um, loads and loads of tree planting basically mm -hmm. uh, and I was back gorilla gardening as a, a member for, uh, representative who works with uh, 
mentioned earlier, because I've done a bit of that in my time. Uh, that's on all district council land and housing developments as well, of course. Uh, there's not enough, there's, there's plenty of scope for new housing, new, new tree planting in housing developments. Yeah. And I think landscape schemes uh, uh, that are subjected to conditions on uh, planning applications need to be resilient to climate change targets as well. And I think the council can also give advice to the public. I think that's a, a key um, objective that, the, that this working party should aim for. And that's to give uh, advice <coughs> to the recycling about rubbish, separate separation, home composting, food waste, grow your own, water butts, bottled water, um, air conditioning uh, versus opening windows as we did in the old days and still do in our house. <coughs> Tumble dryers versus clothes on the line. Uh, lobbying local retailers, especially supermarkets, about single-use plastics and so on. But all these things that the, this council can do, and I think in terms of public education, um, there's a great deal that can be done. It doesn't cost yeah. too much to produce a leaflet, giving advice to the public about things which you do see from waste collection uh, um, but when, on waste collection day. Too many people still throw away too much rubbish. Uh, the grey bin is still overflowing with things that should be recycled. Uh, and our own litter bins, for instance, uh, in the parks and so on, uh, we should have them separated between um, recyclable waste and general waste, as we do on our doorstep. So those are things which I would just suggest as headlines, really, yeah. to start the ball but rolling. Well, you'd like to put your, send your um, observations in to David for consideration, right. that'd be great. Is that what all members are advised to do then? Yeah. Right, okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so I've got nobody else uh, on my list. So, Councillor, do you want to finish? Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Our work is done. <laughs> um, I, I just really what I was going to say in seriousness was, was exactly what uh, Richard said. This is what the, the function of the dedicated email address is going to be for, yeah. to send us those kind of suggestions. Because they, what you've done is, is just given a list of, of what these boxes are. Are, are illustrating and we'll just put them into the right boxes and decide how we go. But thank you for your, your input, but you know, if, if we went around everybody and everybody said we'd be here all night. So, but, but yeah. wait till the, the email is, is up and running and then we'll be able to consider. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favour of the recommended report? Thank you very much, members. Uh,